Tonight, a major new development in the alleged hazing death of Penn State student Timothy Piazza. Ten young men under arrest in the suspected hazing death of a college student in Louisiana. The hazing death of a college freshman, Michael Dang, died two years ago after a brutal beating from his frat brothers. Tonight, the parents of a UT student say they want hazing to stop. Nikki Cumberland died last year after he was injured in a crash. His parents say the driver fell asleep after their group was hazed at a Texas Cowboys retreat. One of the things that's interesting is that people do not know the history of hazing. Uh, people have an idea that it's something that's just been around for a few years. Well, St. Augustine wrote about hazing in the fourth century in his book of Confessions. Martin Luther was a huge advocate of hazing at Wittenberg, saying that if you were hazed at Wittenberg, it would help you as an adult later. The hazing in the European colleges and universities came to Harvard. Uh, a person named Joseph Webb was fine for hazing at Harvard almost the first year that it was founded, and it's come up to the present day in many morphed changes, meaning that alcohol was suddenly added to the mixture at one point. And we finally had a death from alcohol in the 1940s. Sexual abuse was added at some point. And so hazing has been around for a long time, at least since the fourth century, but the nuances and the kinds of hazing change by the year. Um, what are your opinions about hazing? Uh, obviously my opinion about hazing is it's, uh, it's terrible. It's something that's uh, uncalled for um, and I have no tolerance for it. Do you think hazing would affect a player on and off the field in a noticeable way? Uh, absolutely, um, in a very detrimental way. Um, you know, I've, I've been a teacher for 10 years and a coach for 10 years and, and um, you know, teenagers, or any human being that's being hazed, um, you know, it, it, it attacks your self-confidence, it attacks your self-worth. Um, and what it typically leads to is just uh, con the person who gets hazed down the line ends up hazing somebody else. What are your opinions about hazing? Um, I definitely do not think it should be tolerated or allowed. Um, I just think so. we've heard so many just research shows and, and news stories about how it's gone so wrong. And so I just think it's just unnecessary. where you are if you're not familiar with your surroundings and if it doesn't feel like second nature to you you can't consider it home belonging means not being alone um, it's about belonging to something that's bigger than you is being surrounded by people who understand and share something with you hazing is tolerated by many because they simply want to belong they want to build meaningful friendships and bonds that can last a lifetime. In Greek life, pledging and going through hazing is often the only way to experience these connections with others. And although hazing can in many circumstances be dangerous and hurtful, it can lead to positive effects. When one experiences hardship and adversity with another, it often strengthens the bond between them. Hazing solidifies these friendships and matures young adults. It teaches perseverance, teamwork, and mental fortitude. John Talty from the International Business Times reflected on his time being hazed, saying, I grew up extremely close to my fellow Pledge Brothers through the adversity of it all, as well as learning extreme life skills such as the importance of time management. 
As ludicrous as it may sound, I achieved my best GPA in college the semester that I pledged, which was in addition to taking 18 credits and working an internship. Participation in Greek life and hazing that may result has been noted to yield professional implications. As Cornell's official website states, while only 2% of America's population is involved in fraternities, 80% of Fortune 500 executives, 76% of U.S. Senators and Congressmen, 85% of Supreme Court Justices, and all but two presidents since 1825 have been fraternity men. Do you think fraternities and sororities should just not exist? I think it's the best strategy. Um, no, I do not think that's that's the solution because they do form these great relationships and community building, and they do some really really great things. I don't think that's the solution is for them to not exist because for some people, that's one way they establish these relationships with with other people, especially if you're new to a campus, new to a college. It's a good way to meet people. Um, do you have any like any like ideas you think about like, potential solutions? Um, I think there, I know with a lot of sororities and fraternities, schools pretty much let, let them run themselves. And yeah. so I think there needs to be some type, some level of supervision so that, you know, this is not happening. Um, especially on the on the extreme levels that it's happening of like the, the drinking mm-hmm. and, and the, you know, physical, I guess you call it assault. So there needs to be some level of supervision, even though, you know, it's for students to own and have, there's got to be some level of supervision too. On extreme levels, hazing can cause serious injury and death, and on less extreme levels, it creates an environment of fear and intimidation. However, Greek organizations that often embrace hazing as part of its culture are overall very beneficial to students, and mature and developed students providing a platform to connections with others and give back to the community. Hazing is unfortunately embedded in Greek culture because of the vision it creates. Pledgers see hazing as a peril of their dream, their dream of lifelong friends, of popularity, of happiness. Hazing is the only thing standing in their way of this idealized vision and students are able to get through this hardship in order to receive the benefits. Because of this, hazing is very difficult to stop. If been forced to stop hazing, college students will likely do it anyway. And as it's already against the rules, it could increase the severity. We feel the best way to reduce hazing and especially dangerous forms is to raise awareness and hold Greek houses accountable. Anonymous surveys could be conducted, and if hazing is deemed severe within those surveys, specific houses could be shut down. Join us in ending these awful deaths and injuries. By raising awareness and holding fraternities and sororities accountable through anonymous surveys, we can create change in Greek life while preserving its core of creating a community and developing young adults. We must eliminate harmful and violent hazing, and with your help, we can prevent tragedies like these. Thank you.